Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Thanks for dropping in again. This is my old um, and loyal Commodore Plus 4 from uh, I can't remember, 85 I guess. Uh, actually that was my third computer next to my ZX Spectrum and the uh, ZX81 that uh, I have uh, ever since. And um, the way it looks and the way they try to advertise this computer out in the markets for um, uh, serious applications and software is something that I really liked and enjoyed although I never tried to uh, learn how to make spreadsheets uh, or databases onto this machine but uh, I like the way it looks like I said and the way they have presented this um, out in the markets. The marketing was uh, great in magazines like serious users and serious software applications built in for applications built in uh, sounds great and uh, quite uh, catchy but anyways I never had the chance to do some serious work uh, on this particular model it was never made to replace the Commodore 64 um, it was something different they wanted to get in the uh, serious let's say um, business or office uh, users and um, of course it was too late because most of them already have turned to the IBM PC back then or other more sophisticated solutions uh, anyways this guy has a problem with the ribbon cable it is something that I've been facing in the past uh, after all these years the ribbon cable might be damaged and the uh, traces can be lifted or cut or uh, damaged and so I came up with an idea I'm going to try uh, today here uh, in order to repair this and uh, here we can clearly see that all the traces almost all have been raised or cut or have been loose uh, not uh, in the right position so they cannot make contact on the keyboard connector um, on the on the motherboard and so now what I need to do is carefully raise all, lift them all and detach them from this um, plastic uh, transparent uh, whatever uh, sticker is behind them and then <coughs> I can make a connection, a new connection with uh, pin headers. Pin headers are always useful, nice to have um, around the lab and I should try to make uh, good uh, um, contact, good uh, soldering points and put the pin headers, 18 uh, of them um, onto the ribbon cable and then try to insert the pin headers into the keyboard um, connector here so I have my pin headers, uh, male uh, pin headers here um, I need to uh, cut uh, 18 of them and um, solder the shorter part uh, onto the cable make new contacts and then the longest uh, part of uh, the actual connector will be inserted like this into the connector on the motherboard on this like this so I'll try to do just that make sure that let's see if yeah I think it's going to be a tight connection after all I'll cut it right here uh, so I can mark 18 to be in use and uh, try to do the soldering part on the shorter this side uh, the best way that I can so it can be stable and put it like this I'll do the soldering one by one with patience and, and see what happens in a while um, so yeah let me jump into it now just because some of the traces are still stuck on this ribbon uh, backside the transparent side of the ribbon I need to 
lift them all and let them loose and for this purpose I'm using a needle just to raise it carefully, lift it and detach it from the back side of the um, ribbon cable which is this transparent thing that makes the connector thicker so that can firmly be connected onto the keyboard connector on the motherboard but now we don't need that part, this transparent thing we just need to have the traces free and lifted and then we can start soldering uh, each and every one of these traces to the uh, pin header connector and create a new kind of connector, our own connector so that we can bring this keyboard back to life today and so now we have detached the uh, plastic uh, whatever um, part of the ribbon was there behind the traces and we have the traces now ready um, these are very delicate traces needless to say we need extra attention uh, handling um, the whole part of the ribbon but also soldering the, the cables uh, right here with the pin headers one by one very carefully again uh, and so we can uh, put some extra uh, tape around it or not uh, uh, whatever you wish to put around the soldering points uh, so uh, they can be um, uh, non-conductive but we'll see let me just jump into the soldering part of the repair and speeding up uh, the video <laughs> here we have it uh, it took me around 10 minutes to do the soldering both sides and make sure that the uh, connection points are strong points uh, soldered the right way um, and of course they are not getting in contact with each other and for this purpose we're going to put continuity the usual test continuity in the multimeter and do the test the upper side of the uh, connection and the uh, bottom side of the connection and I can only assume that uh, the continuity test was successful and then we can place the pin headers connector the, our own kind of connector into the existing keyboard connector on the motherboard and it looks good apparently it's tight and um, not loose in any way and so I think uh, we have chances to uh, make it work again of course um, I don't know if there is any new ribbon out in the markets for the Commodore Plus 4 I haven't searched over the internet or anywhere to check for uh, replacements for the keyboard for the Commodore Plus 4 but now um, I remember that I have done this in the past uh, for another uh, Commodore Plus 4 and it worked and so uh, you can always look around I will definitely look around for a decent uh, keyboard replacement but now just to keep me going I came up with this idea and since I have used it uh, this c kind of connector in the past and it was a success why not uh, um, I'm trying this as well today and uh, apparently it looks like it's working this uh, bluish part of the uh, upper part of the screen is not there everything is purple in real life but I don't know something is I don't know why it looks like bluish and purple on the bottom side it's something that has to do with my camera I don't know but anyways uh, it's not um, distorted image it's uh, purple all around the border so just I'm just saying one of the things I usually do is uh, I'm loading some game to <laughs> celebrate every uh, successful repair or fix or whatever little things I'm trying to do here so here is the treasure island loading and uh, one interesting thing here we can mention is that graphics have never been part of the uh, strong points let's say for the Commodore Plus 4 
nor the Commodore 16. Uh, apparently this machine can support up to 121 colors at the same time on the screen which is good comparing this to um, a Commodore 64 for example but uh, the Commodore Plus 4 and the Commodore 16 could uh, not use any sprites which was something that really really was disappointing um, for the users back then um, the idea that if this is a serious machine for serious applications and serious software doesn't mean that the machine uh, couldn't have been designed uh, in order to support sprites um, for some decent gaming after all but anyways that's how those two computers have been designed and so probably one of the reasons that they haven't um, succeeded out in the markets so thanks for watching I hope that was a uh, useful video uh, I, you might step into something that this kind of um, solution might be uh, or can be followed with the pin headers um, and save the day um, thanks for watching I'll be catching you soon with another video another repair demo review from the past something from the 8-bit era uh, I hope you like this stuff and if you do just please do consider subscribing and yeah I'll see you soon Thanks for watching. Bye.